Hey there everyone, AJ back again for the Mighty Glue Stick channel. The first Tanari were forged from the souls of the first humanoids drawn to the abyss. Most Tanari incorporate humanoid features into their forms as a result of their close ties to the mortal realm, and they often emulate the evil behaviours, biology and social structures of mortals, but are extremely violent and chaotic. The Rutikin are pathetic, malformed humanoid demons. They're one of the most common types of a demon a traveller will encounter in the abyss. But even so, it is such a vast and sprawling network of haphazardly interconnected planes and planets, linked together by the infectious spread of demonic power throughout the multiverse, that one can travel for miles and miles and not encounter a single demon, if that traveller is extremely lucky. The Rutikin lurch and stagger, crawl and prowl through the varied landscapes searching for prey, searching for new portals and things to torture and consume. They are often can encountered alone and this is always one of the reasons why it's quite often one of the types of demons that you'll encounter first, away from pockets and concentrations of other demons. They wander in gangs and hordes, all singly, outcasts in their own deranged society. Some serve the greater demons but some search out the snivelling dretches and drag them into the open where more powerful demons take them for sport or an unsatisfying meal. The Rudikin are self-serving and vicious, with loyalty to nobody but their own kind, and even then, just barely. They resemble terribly ugly humans, twisted, mutated and almost completely hairless with warped limbs, clawed feet and snarling um, warped feet and hands, snarling, hideous faces, distorted and pointed skulls and backward pointing ears. They, well, remember how I said demons can emulate the biology of humanoids? Rudikin are the offspring of manes, another form of Tanari demon, but manes resemble little fat deformed men and have no will of their own. They go where they are told, they charge at targets completely recklessly in massed groups that simply swamp anything before them, or form a ramp of dead bodies that the other manes charge over, scaling ramparts, burying defences and offences alike. They are commanded by greater demons to do whatever they are told, and the Nalfeshni, those giant bloated scumbag, giant boar-faced demons, often tell them to breed with one another. This is one of the least pleasant sights in the multiverse, and testament to how disgusting the Nalfeshni really are, to even dream this up. But the end result of this coupling is the birthing of the Rutikin. The Rutikins are despised by all other demons, except the Manes, who don't care one way or another about anything. They'll simply kill any Rutikin that they're allowed to, even the one that burst out of the rear end of them. Yeah, it's really not nice. It's entirely not nice. So Rudikins are really, really foul creatures. They radiate this supernatural menace that manifests as a crawling fear of their corruption. This is reflected in the trait listed in their entry in Mordenkainen's Tome of Foes on page 136. When three or more Rudikin are within 30 feet of a creature that is not a demon, it has to make a DC 11 wisdom saving throw or become frightened of them. But this is not the runaway kind of frightened. This is the, oh god, oh god, I'm about to suffer a fate worse than death restrained kind of terror and it lasts for a full minute unless the victim can snap out of it and make the saving throw at the end of the round. What is worse is that if there are six or more Rudikin within 30 feet they must make a, the save with disadvantage. Luckily once they make the saving throw they're immune to this effect for the next 24 hours. Rudikin are deformed and fairly slow. They move at 20 feet per round normally, but they can dash. They average, uh, they average an armor class of 12 and 37 hit points. They have resistance to cold, fire and lightning and immunity to all poisons. 120 foot uh, dark vision and immunity to fear or being charmed. They can understand the abyssal speech of other demons, but they have no capacity to talk. Their throats are just twisted nightmares. Although they can groan and shriek, they communicate mostly with each other, and they use a feeble form of telepathy that doesn't work on non-demons. In older editions of the game, they had some spell-like abilities, so I would provide those as a means of beefing up the threat of the Rudikin while sticking to the core concept. For 5th edition, they have a bite attack uh, that has a very nasty side effect, and this is the reason why you fear Rudikins. The 
Smite is plus four to hit, does 3d6 plus do two damage to the victim. If a creature is vulnerable to this sort of effect, it then makes a DC 13 constitution saving throw or suffers the poisoned condition. And by this, it's an agonizing condition with this black toxic abyssal corruption spreading through the body as they have become infected with the Ruddikin's abyssal disease. Now, the thing with this disease is that it is effective immediately. Even though the victim can attempt another saving throw at the end of each long rest, the influence of the disease is there. The victims will suffer the poisoning condition, but if at any point they make, uh, before they make the saving throw and rid themselves of this affliction, and they are reduced to zero hit points. So this includes being beaten to the point where they drop to zero hit points from being knocked out. A terrible transformation takes place. Their body is warped and contorted. The flesh wraps around the bones and organs and they're distorted and rearranged. Their eyes shrink and bulge or move around on their shrieking face. The mouth and teeth, nails and skin become chaotic, haphazard, disfigured and mutated. They scream and beg for death, which soon claims them. But then they somehow become revived as the demonic essence takes hold and they rise again profane and shockingly hideous as an abyssal wretch which they then basically follow around after the rotokin because they have nothing else to do they they can't die at their own hands they have to basically get killed or kill something else or take their pain out on anything that's around them but they are no more what they once were. This really is why Ruddikins are something that a traveller to the abyss should be very cautious of, since the only way to restore someone from the abyssal wretch condition is by use of a wish spell, and those are not easy to come by. The Ruddikin may be toughened up by increasing their hit points in armor class, uh, plus you can give them spell-like abilities that they can use once per day, such as fear as per the spell, but delivered as a touch attack. They may also be able to cast fly on themselves, or use telekinesis as per the spell, with saving throws appropriate for the challenge rating you can assign you want to assign them the bite attack damage should not go up too much but the damage bonus on top of the dice rolls should increase a bit Rodokin are not generally included in the massed armies of the demon host that is what the demons use the mains for the most likely encounters with Rodokin is when they have discovered a new planar breach or portal opened into another realm particularly the prime material plane in which case they will attempt to gate in others of their own kind before rushing through the portal to savagely attack anything on the other side because they profoundly hate all forms of life not just other demons not their own not just their own kind um, they hate everything Rudikin may originally have come into being another way as there are legends in the abyss that say the first Rudikin was what was left when the first mortal planner explorers encountered the abyss and demons for the very first time the Nalfeshni have also been known to transform captured humanoids into Rudikin through a foul and excruciating torture process using the, the essence of the abyss ejected into them, crafted into a toxin um, that they inject or um, into their victims as a means of torture. Don't forget that if just the bite of one of these creatures is capable of inflicting and warping a person to their unbearable painful fate, imagine what the blood of a Rudikin could do if they are slaughtered and it washes down the river of a township, where they drink it or fill the water troughs of their livestock and horses food for thought. Don't forget to go check out the new merchandise in the Mighty Glue Stick store. I'll add a direct link in the end, the end of the video, uh, as well as a direct link to Chrono, so you can check out the freshly discounted video game, games of the day. All proceeds go directly to my coffee fund, because these videos require my brain to go to strange and disturbing places, a sacrifice I'm willing to make for the greater good. Please hit the like button if you didn't hate this video. If you dislike, uh, hit the dislike button if you did, and if you just hate me then hit nothing why are you even here go do things with your life special thanks to the patrons of the channel they get uh, one week advanced access to these videos plus fewer ad breaks and they get to request video content directly from me as well as having access to the written scripts for all of these videos they gain access to the all that and pay only as much as much as they want every month it's completely under their control but it means so much to me thanks to all of the thriving community on the mighty discord link to that in the description text down below and a very special thank you for listening i will be back with more weekly demon videos more monster ecology more lore on the world settings famous figures and exotic locations of dungeons and dragons very soon